Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at the mean value theorem. Now this is a theorem that is quite important for the reason that it's useful for proving other big theorems in calculus. Now the mean value theorem by itself, when you look at it, may seem rather intuitive. But don't let that fool you. It is a powerhouse of a theorem. It'll allow us to prove a number of different theorems throughout Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3. So let's go ahead and look at a special case of the mean value theorem first. Then we'll look at the mean value theorem in its full generality. And then we'll look at some applications of the mean value theorem and see what kind of results it'll help us prove. So a special case of the mean value theorem is known as Rolle's theorem. And what Rolle's theorem says is, let's suppose we start with a function f, and we know that it satisfies three conditions. We know that it's continuous on a closed interval a, b. We know that it's differentiable on this open interval a, b. So in other words, it's continuous on a closed interval, and it's differentiable on that interval except possibly at the endpoints. And let's suppose further that the values of the function at the two endpoints are equal to each other. Can we conclude anything about the function? And it turns out, yes, we can conclude that there has to be some value c in that interval a, b, for which the derivative is 0. So let's get a picture for this. So we've got a function, which is continuous on the interval a, b. And we know the values at the endpoints have to be the same. f of a has to equal f of b. We know that the function is continuous, so I have to connect these two points with a continuous curve. And it has to be a smooth curve. It's got to be differentiable. So it may look something like this. And so there's our graph of our function f. The conclusion of Rolle's theorem says, well, if I look along this curve, there's got to be a point where the derivative is 0. And so I look at it and I think, well, yeah, actually it does. It looks like somewhere around here, so I'll put it in a different color, somewhere around here, the tangent line is horizontal. So f prime of c is 0 for this value of c. So this is what Rolle's theorem says. Under these conditions, continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, function values are the same at the endpoints, there has to be a place on that interval where the function's derivative is zero. Notice it just says there is a number. There could be more than one. So, you know, a quick sketch here. There's a, there's b. Our function could do this. It could go up and then down and then maybe end like that. So here we have an example where there are two places where the derivative is 0. Now there's this place c1, and then there's this other place, c2. So f prime of c1 is equal to 0, and f prime of c2 is equal to 0. So there could be more than one such value c, such c. Okay? So the Rolle's theorem just says you have a value where the derivative is 0. Could be more than 1. So are the hypotheses necessary? Well, hypotheses are necessary. Let's look at just a quick example where one of these conditions doesn't hold. So pick a particular example here. Suppose at 0, the function value is 0. And then at 2, the function value is 0 as well. And let's say at 1, the function value is up here. And then let's just connect these by straight lines. So straight line up there, and then a straight line down here. So this function is continuous on the closed interval. The function values at the endpoints are the same. But notice that it's not differentiable in the open interval. It's not differentiable in particular at 1. There's this corner happening at 1. So it's not differentiable at x equals 1. 
Okay, so now let's look at the conclusion of Rolle's theorem. We don't satisfy the hypotheses. So, in general, the conclusion probably shouldn't hold true. It may, but in general it might not. And so we look at it and we say, well, the conclusion is saying that there has to be a number c where the derivative is zero. And I look at this and I say, well, no, there is no number c for which the derivative is zero. The derivative is some positive constant for all these values to the left of one. It's some negative constant for all these values to the right of one. But right at one, it's not differentiable there. So here, we have that there is no value c in the interval 1, 2, such that f prime of c is 0. So we need these hypotheses. We need continuity, we need differentiability, and we need the equality at the endpoints in order to conclude that there has to be a place. There has to be a place where the derivative is 0. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples where we check these three conditions to make sure they hold. So our first function, f of x is equal to square root of x minus the cube of the square root of x on 0, 1. Let's see if the conditions for Rolle's theorem holds. So what do we need? Well, we need that f is continuous on 0, 1. So what is f of x? Well, if I write it this way, minus square root of x all cubed, it may seem clear now that this is just made up of a couple of square root functions. And those are continuous on the closed interval 0, 1. So this combination of them should be. So this is continuous on the interval 0, 1. What about differentiability? So I take its derivative. Derivative of x to the 1 half is 1 over 2 root x. The derivative of x to the 3 halves is 3 halves. And then x to the, and then take away 1 away from the exponent, so that's x to the 1 half, or in other words, root x. On the open interval 0, 1, both of these are defined, both terms are defined, and so their difference is as well. So this is differentiable on the open interval, 0, 1. It's not differentiable at 0, but that's one of the endpoints. And the conditions of Rolle's theorem just says you need differentiability on the open interval. So we have it on the open interval. What about our endpoints? So f at 0, well that's 0. f of 1, well that's square root of 1 minus the square root of 1 cubed. That's also 0. And so we have that all three conditions of Rolle's theorem are satisfied. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the conclusion holds. So therefore, there is a value c in the interval 0 to 1 such that f prime of c is 0. So that's our conclusion. Now notice that just applying Rolle's theorem doesn't tell us how to find that value. It doesn't tell us what that value c is. It just tells us that one exists. One value exists for which the derivative is zero at it. So at this point we know it exists. We can go ahead and try to find it. So let's find it. Well I want to figure out where f prime of x is zero. f prime of x I've already worked out up here. That's one over two root x minus three halves root x is equal to zero. Well that means we need then moving the negative 3 halves root x to one side, we get 1 over 2 root x is equal to 3 halves root x. I can can't multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the 2 on the denominator. I can bring the square root of x to the other side by multiplying both sides by square root of x. And I can bring the 3 to the other side. So doing a bit of manipulation here, I can get this as equal to 1 third is equal to x. So there's our value of c. c is a third, works. It's a place where the derivative is zero. So Rolle's theorem guaranteed the existence of such a point, and then we had to go ahead and find it. And we found it by using the derivative, setting it to zero, and doing a bit of algebra. What about the next example? Let's see if the conditions for Rolle's theorem hold for this. 
So we look at continuity. Is f continuous? Well, it's made up of the cube root function squared. Cube root function, yep, that's continuous on negative 1 to 1. Squaring it, still continuous. One take away from it, still continuous. So f is continuous on negative 1 to 1. What about differentiability? Well, let's take its derivative and see what happens. So this is 2 thirds x to the minus 1 third, or in other words, 2 over 3 cubed root of x. So does f prime exist on the interval, open interval negative 1 to 1? Well, no. At 0, we have a problem. So uh, the derivative is this, which is not defined at x equals 0. So f is not differentiable on the interval, open interval, negative 1 to 1. So we can stop here because we know the conditions aren't satisfied. All three conditions aren't satisfied. In particular, the second one wasn't satisfied. So the conditions of Rolle's theorem are not satisfied. So that means we can't make the conclusion that there is a place where the derivative is zero. You know what? There could still be a place where the derivative is zero. Its existence, however, does not follow from the conditions of Rolle's theorem. Maybe you shrink the interval a little bit. Instead of looking at negative 1 to 1, you look on a smaller interval and see what happens there. Um, but again, you have to look on a smaller interval where the values of the functions are the same at the two endpoints. Okay? But as of right now, the conditions aren't satisfied, so we can't assume the conclusion holds true. So let's see. What if we actually take the derivative and try to set it equal to 0 and look to see if there actually is a place where the derivative is 0? So let's check that there isn't a place where the derivative is 0. Okay, so we have the derivative already. 2 thirds cube root of x. We're going to set it equal to 0. Oh, and we already see from this equation that this expression on the left is never going to be 0 for any value of x. So this has no solutions. So there is no place for the derivative of 0. And there's you know, quite a simple reason as to why. On negative 1 to 1, well, if I plug in negative 1 and 1 into the expression, I get zeros for both of them. And if I look at what the value is at 0, it's 1, so it goes up to here. And then the function looks like this. It sweeps up, and it's got, at this point, 0, it's got a vertical tangent line there, or a cusp. And so this is not differentiable at 0. And we see by scanning along, there are no places where the derivative is 0. There are no places where the derivative is 0. The slope of the tangent line is positive to the left of the vertical axes, and it's negative to the right of the vertical axes. Okay, so there was a couple of examples where we just checked the hypotheses of Rolle's theorem. One worked out, there was a place where the derivative was zero. The other one didn't work out, the conditions weren't satisfied, and we found that there wasn't a place where the derivative was zero.